Welcome everyone. My uh, name is Roy Hassan. I'm an analytics specialist at AWS. Uh, in this session, I wanted to talk to you about the use case that would allow you to burst new or even SLA bound workloads to Amazon EMR using Alexio. So before we dive into the use case, um, let's review the top motivating reasons our customers see as driving them to create modern data platforms on AWS. The first and most common reason is the exponential growth of data they need to collect and store in a cost-effective manner. The main reason why data volume is growing so quickly is because there are many new data sources such as IoT and mobile devices to understand user behavior and consumption, infrastructure monitoring and observability so we can improve and provide stable and reliable services, as well as the many third-party services such as social media, marketing and ad platforms and data exchanges to help enrich the insights we generate. So these are diverse data sets that are consumed through different mechanisms such as file uploads, real-time streaming, or through log aggregation tools. They also come in different file formats and data structures that we need to normalize before they can be used. This brings up another challenge many of our customers face and that is enabling ubiquitous access to many different personas. In the last few years, we've seen the traditional um, data-oriented roles become more specialized, creating roles such as a data ops engineer, a data scientist, or a feature engineer. We also saw data and analytics proliferate into existing roles such as uh, a product manager that um, needs better insight into how uh, consumers use their product. We also shouldn't forget about the data applications, most commonly business intelligence and machine learnings. But, um, you know, these are, um, you know, there's other applications that consume and act uh, on this data that um, are really going to grow. The data platform that we build today uh, needs to scale to meet these demands quickly and cost effectively. Cloud native companies have an advantage uh, in that they quickly start leveraging fully managed and scalable services and tools. But there are still many companies who have on-premise data platforms using Apache Hadoop and legacy data warehouses. These platforms are difficult to manage and upgrade resulting in them uh, falling behind on technological innovation, improvements, and even critical security fixes. It's also very difficult to integrate with the hottest uh, and most innovative new technology trends and tools because they're designed to run in a cloud, leaving you struggling to find the best possible alternative, which isn't always the best use of your time. Furthermore, not having the flexibility you need inhibits your ability to experiment and iterate quickly, which makes it very difficult to remain competitive and innovate on behalf of your customers. Not to mention the capital and operational expense that goes into maintaining, scaling, and growing the adoption of your on-premise environment. So modernization is, is a journey, right? We don't snap a finger and it's done. It takes time. It's careful planning uh, to really make sure that all the requirements are met and that you're building a solution that will scale with your business needs. So throughout this journey, the business doesn't really stop and wait. There are new projects, applications, and demands that must be met by the platform. So you need a big data platform that can enable you to solve your business problems today while still maintaining continuity for your users and your applications. Introducing Amazon EMR. Some of you may have already heard about EMR, but it's really the easiest way to run large data processing and analytics jobs on the cloud. EMR is a fully managed service that makes, uh, that makes running open source engines such as Apache Spark, Presto, Hive, very simple and cost effective. We support over 21 different frameworks and continuously update them with the latest releases. We also make sure the operating system is updated and all security patches are applied so you don't really need to think about it. Um, Amazon EMR gives you several options to manage your cost such as compute, uh, compute savings plan, moving the data previously stored in HDFS to an object store like Amazon S3, and also using EC2 Spot, which gives you up to 80% discount on your compute. We've also made, service, uh, we also made the service much easier to use, so you don't need to be a Hadoop administrator or Hadoop expert to use it. The first improvement um, 
is the Amazon EMR optimized runtime. So this new runtime allows us to build uh, in to, to kind of build in best practices, tuning and optimizations directly into Apache Spark through an API compatible layer. So this doesn't break compatibility, but it gives you all the benefits out of the box without really having to do any extra work. So again, this means that you get the best performance right out of the box and you don't have to do any tuning or benchmarking or mess around with configuration. From a cost perspective, you don't need uh, to keep your clusters up as long because now jobs can complete faster. Another way that we're making EMR easier uh, to use is with managed scaling. So this feature eliminates all of the guessing that go into traditional auto scaling and does it all for you. So you simply have to configure the allowed minimum and maximum cluster size and EMR does the rest. Now there's other parameters you can, you can pass in like whether the instance types are spot or on demand or what combination of instances you wanna use but at its base minimum, it's really the, the minimum and maximum cluster size. And that's really all you have to do. So you no longer need to guess um, how much data your users uh, will process. And they don't have to take the time, take, take your time to go figure out why their jobs are running slow and how to get more capacity from you. So users can proc, uh, process however much data they really want. And EMR will just scale to meet the demand with guardrails, of course. Um, as with the optimized runtime that I talked about before, managed scaling can reduce the EMR cost by up to 60% because nodes can be decommissioned as quickly as the job completes. All right, so let's see how to think about modernization. There are three key approaches to modernizing your big data workloads. Lift and shift, which is simpler, it takes less time. Uh, once you've shifted the workloads, you can begin to re-architect and optimize. So that's a process that is quick to get started. And then after you've done the work, you can come back and kind of figure out what's the best way to, to move forward and, and build a future state design. Re-architecting is like spring cleaning, right? You spend the time upfront to figure out which data sets and workloads you want to keep and which ones you can decommission. It also gives you the opportunity to identify the best tool for the job. So, you know, in some cases, it may make sense for you to move maybe hive reporting jobs to a data warehouse like Amazon Redshift uh, and interactive queries running on maybe Impala or Presto to Amazon Athena. The hybrid approach is the one we'll focus on for the rest of this discussion and is simple and, and it's really a simple way for you to run net new workloads. Uh, or those needing dedicated capacity uh, to meet critical SLAs on, on, uh, on the cloud while the back, well, sorry, what in the background, you really figure out how to re-architect your workloads to be more cloud native, right? So let's start with, you know, SLA bound workloads with new workloads on the cloud. And then in the background, figure out how to uh, migrate your existing workload, how to re-architect them. All right. So, you already heard a lot about Alexio data orchestration platform. This is what this, this conference is all about. Um, so I won't spend time talking about what that is, but what I'll, I'll talk about here is um, kind of how do we think about it from an EMR perspective? So we're going to, we're going to use um, this design uh, as an architecture that will allow us to burst workloads to the cloud by intelligently moving only the required data. So we use Alexio uh, catalog service installed on EMR to automatically synchronize the metadata between the on-premise Hive Metastore and the AWS Glue data catalog that is, uh, that is integrated with the rest of the AWS analytics and also ML ecosystem. So think of it as a central serverless Hive compatible Metastore. Uh, we're also gonna use the Alexia Unified File System to move data on demand. So only the files that are needed to satisfy the query that you're running or maybe the ETL job that you're running will be moved from HDFS on-premise to Amazon S3. Now we can be cached in a cluster for better performance in EMR. And we can also trickle down that data back to S3. So we're saving the data there for future calculations and future queries, right? So it's a way for us to move that data almost in real time 
uh, and on demand and, and copy it into S3. So later you can run more workloads on top of that same data. So pretty simple, um, pretty simple architecture. The other thing I wanted to call out and kind of related to, to that architecture that I, I just described is, you know, Amazon EMR can also run on AWS Outpost. And Outpost, as you can see by this picture here, it's a cluster of, of servers that managed fully by AWS through the AWS console, but is located inside of your data warehouse. So you can get all of the same benefits of EMR in the cloud, but locally on premise. So you know, nowadays we're seeing a lot of um, tremendous growth in edge computing where like IoT devices and autonomous vehicles generate just massive amounts of data that is more optimal to process locally than to transfer all the data to the cloud first and then process it and probably throw away a good portion of it. So running on AWS Outpost allows you to use all the same big data engines like Spark and Hive and Presto together with the ease of use of EMR fully manage services, the Spark optimization, the managed scaling that I talked about, all running on-premise. So you can even install Alexia if you wanted um, to cache this, uh, this S3 data locally on Outpost to get better performance, right? So if you're reading data from the cloud to do some processing locally in, in Outpost, you can use Alexia to cache that, to cache that data. Cool, so bursting on-premise uh, workloads to Amazon EMR using Alexia is actually pretty simple. Uh, and you can get really massive productivity and performance gains with little effort. And the, the diagram that I showed you looked pretty simple. We didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about it because there really is not a lot of complexity. And that's really the beauty of this. Uh, but it's only the first step uh, in, in kind of your modernization journey. So keeping the future state architecture in mind is critical to successful modernization. All right, so this is a bit of a busy slide, but you know, if we think about it, a future state can be anything. But more commonly, I see customers building towards a lake house architecture. And there are many different definitions of what a lake house is, but I'll, this is kind of what AWS thinks of a lake house. But what, what exactly does that mean, right? So it means that you first construct a foundational data lake that stores all of the structured and unstructured data in Amazon S3, enable you to cost effectively scale to meet the demand. Whether you're processing the data in advance or not, or you even know what to do with it, storing in S3 makes it easier for you. So it also provides uh, for disaster recovery. This is a business requirement that has traditionally been very costly on premise as well as multiple storage tiers and intelligent lifecycle management that would have required you to have um, third-party software installed and, and paying for to be able to get that. So you get all those things out of the box with an S3-based data lake. AWS Glue Data Catalog makes all of this data discoverable and really easily accessible from any number of tools. AWS Lake Formation, uh, provides a governance layer that allows you to manage access to the data in a single place, right? So no longer do you have to define policies across multiple systems and tools and storage and compute, et cetera. Now you're defining it in one place. It's easier to manage uh, and it's also easy to audit. So on top of this data lake that you just created, you can now layer what we call the lake house consumers. AWS Data Exchange allows you to monetize your data so that's if you want to resell the data in some way. Amazon SageMaker, right? If you want to experiment, train, and even host machine learning models. Um, Amazon Athena for fast serverless queries. Amazon Redshift for data warehousing queries across S3 and local hard drives, local cache in the cluster. Uh, you can also use Amazon EMR installed with Alexio uh, to first improve the performance of your existing Spark and Presto jobs by caching data locally. And second, to federate access to data outside of AWS, cache it for better performance, and then use it to hydrate your AWS data lake with this external data, right? So whether that's a different cloud, um, your on-prem environment, you can use that as, as a way to intelligently federate data into your AWS-based data lake. So um, through this secure and flexible access layer, you can begin to offer your users advanced capabilities not easily available to them on-premise, right? 
You use Amazon QuickSight to build dashboards and embed visualizations directly into your applications. You can use AWS Glue Data Brew, something we released uh, recently, to visualize, ex uh, to visually explore and prepare your data um, that you can then use uh, in Amazon SageMaker Studio to experiment and build your models, right? Don't forget all the Amazon AI services, um, such as Amazon Personalize, Forecast, Comprehend and Comprehend Medical, Translate, and many others that allow you to leverage machine learning on top of your data requiring little to no ML experience. So think about the powerful, oh, the, 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 the powerful capabilities that you can offer to your business users without having to invest a whole lot in infrastructure on premise. Only because you've burst it to the cloud, now you open up this, this door of capabilities to your business. So that's really, really powerful. All right, so just to kind of recap um, what we kind of learned throughout this presentation, Modernization is a journey, right? I don't want you to think it's you flip the switch and it's done. There's no one way to solve the problem. It's really a journey and different customers uh, approach this journey differently. Um, you know, but, but I think one way that we talked about here that, that's really valuable to a lot of customers is this hybrid approach where you're bursting new and critical SLA bound workloads to the cloud. So you're not impacting your existing infrastructure. You're not impacting uh, your application dependencies or the current business that's running on premise, you're taking those critical workloads or maybe those new workloads, experimentation and things like that, and you're bursting into the cloud without having to copy all of your data and all of your applications first, right? So it's really powerful. Um, you burst these workloads to Amazon EMR, which is basically a fully managed service to run your big data workloads and also ML, um, giving you the best performance capabilities and cost savings. So, um, and oh, sorry, and, and also when you install Alexio on EMR, you really get the ability to automatically synchronize the metadata catalogs, which is not easy to do. Um, so your users can find and access the tables they need, whether the table lives on AWS or whether it lives on premise. Um, Alexio also makes it super easy to only move the data that's required to satisfy the query or job um, you're running. So that saves you data transfer fee, uh, this data transfer costs. Um, now that you're, um, you started kind of bursting workloads to AWS, you can begin to build out your future state architecture. Whether it's a lake house or some other form of a data lake is really up to you. Um, but with data and metadata on the cloud, you can begin to leverage all of the AWS native analytics and ML uh, goodness to, to really solve some, some of your business uh, most challenging problems without having to put extra investment into your on-prem environment, spend a lot of money and time in acquiring hardware and figure out how to install some of these advanced um, tools and technologies on on-prem's uh, on-premise environment. All right. So thank you again for your time today. I hope this session was valuable to you. Uh, if you wanted to get started with this approach, uh, I recommend visiting the, the Alexio link that I have on the, on the screen here uh, and get started with the EMR bootstrap that allows you to launch a cluster and install all the Alexio uh, applications on top of that. And then you can go to the Alexio console and start configuring away. With that, thank you very much and uh, have a good rest of your time. Mm -hmm.